So it's match day minus one and I'm here at the Volkswagen Arena for the match day minus one press conference. Um, you can't quite see the Volkswagen Arena sign there in the video. I couldn't quite get it in the shot. Uh, but here to speak to Jonas Eideval and Leo Williamson ahead of tomorrow night's UEFA Champions League quarterfinal with Wolfsburg. Um, really, really crucial tie. Obviously very finely balanced after a 1-1 draw at Emirates Stadium last week where Wolfsburg, in truth, had the better of the first half an hour, took the lead, but after that, I think Arsenal really did pin them back and deserved their late equaliser through Lotte Wub and Moy. Uh, so I'm going to ask Jonas a little bit about that. I'm going to ask him, uh, I think, principally about uh, those of you that read my analysis piece, which was probably not many of you, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I kind of focused on how Arsenal uh, got Wolfsburg to call off that press, because in the first half an hour, Wolfsburg were really high, really pressing against Arsenal. Um, and really forcing them backwards and hitting long balls uh, over the top of them and, and really acting quite quickly. But gradually, Arsenal pushed them back a bit, principally through the runs of Stina Blackstinia. She was running those channels brilliantly. What was happening was Beth Mead from the right and Katie McKay from the left were coming in and Stina was running the channels and Arsenal started to find a little bit of joy doing that. And I think Wolfsburg kind of had to call off their press because they were a bit worried. Um, about leaving that space in behind, albeit they had a 1-0 lead and Wolfsburg were a brilliant team on the counter-attack, so they were probably fairly comfortable defending. But at the same time, one of the things Arsenal are going to have to do tomorrow night that I think is really key is not take half an hour to find that weak spot um, in Wolfsburg uh, like, like they did at the Emirates. I mean, they still had a good 60 minutes after that, but obviously this is a different game. This is in Germany in front of a home crowd. Um, and if Arsenal kind of give up the first 30 minutes again, the time might slip beyond them. Uh, albeit that said, although Wolfsburg are at home, they haven't actually played here at the Volkswagen Arena since they last played Arsenal in this competition in the 2013 semi-final. So there's about 7,000 tickets sold. It will be a partisan home crowd. Albeit, I'm told about 300 tickets sold in the Arsenal section as well. So there will be an away section um, with some Arsenal fans. There are a good number of travelling fans. Um, but at the same time, this is a bit of a... It's not a neutral ground, but it's not Wolfsburg's home ground. And Arsenal, I think, will hope, particularly in the first half an hour, um, that you know Wolfsburg maybe take half an hour to feel a bit familiar here. But I'll ask Jonas and Leah about that a little bit. So we're done at the Volkswagen Arena for the match day minus one press conference. Is a bullish Jonas Eideval talking about how um, he's really excited by this game and fascinated by this game because you've got two teams who play in quite different styles actually, but aren't used to playing teams uh, in the respective style of their opponents. So Wolfsburg not really used to playing teams like Arsenal and Arsenal not really used to playing teams like Wolfsburg either. Uh, and you can tell that he's really, really enthused by this game. Um, I asked him about the fitness or or otherwise of Hafaieli, uh, Mana Iwabuchi and Caitlin Ford and he wouldn't be drawn. He just said... Uh, some, not all. Uh, so, uh, but it's... Uh... And I'm not going to dwell into more detail about it. Um, so keeping his cards close to his chest, which is not uncharacteristic, but I think a really nice touch in the press conference as well. He was asked about Kim Little, who, uh, assuming she starts tomorrow, and let's face it, it's Kim Little, she will start tomorrow. Uh, that will be her 60th Champions League appearance. She scored 40 goals in the competition in that time. And he was asked whether Kim is a legend in this competition. And he just said, Kim Little's a legend, period. She's a legend in the Champions League, in the WS, at Arsenal for the Scottish national team um, and he said you know the way she trained yesterday absolutely exemplary as always and he's expecting the same from her in the game as well um, quite clear as well that he's expecting a really really tight game on Thursday evening and, and I think we all are really um, I think that's what we got in the first leg and he said when you look at the chances from the first leg really 1-1 was probably a fair result but he felt that Arsenal got into some good positions in the first leg but they just didn't quite make enough of them that they were good at progressing the ball into good positions but weren't, perhaps weren't as good at doing that final bit in the penalty area in the final third where it really mattered and he said that is what he's looking for tomorrow night to keep that good approach play um, but perhaps just have a little bit more spark a little bit more magic in the final third and I asked him as well about Stina Blackstinius and he just said 
you know, when I evaluated our games against the top European opposition, the top WSL opposition, he felt like Arsenal just missed that player running those channels, running in behind. And he said that now Arsenal have Vivian Miedema and Stina Blackstinius. Of course, it's really important to have players that are really strong in running in behind. It's really important to have players that are strong in receiving the ball in front of the defending line. If you can have both, you force the opponent to prioritise which space to uh, to control and be compact in. So I think it's important for us, but it's important for any team in the world playing football. He just said that's so hard for opponents to deal with because they have to make a choice about which player they look after the most. And again, clear that those two will have a big bearing on whether Arsenal go through um, tomorrow night. Also chatted with Leah Williamson, but we'll drop some of that in. Uh, Leah, this is your, I think your third quarter final in the Champions League with the club. Um, never quite got to the semi-final. Um, how desperate are you to get over that hurdle and how much how much do you think that would really represent progress for Arsenal? Yeah, I think that in my time here, like you say, um, we've not been present in the stage of the tournament enough, let alone, obviously, we've, we've never got to the semi-final. So in terms of the direction of the club and where we're going, it's important for us to be on that stage and, and achieve those sorts of things um, if we want to be the team that we're saying we do. So, uh, yeah, it will be an important day tomorrow. and. Hopefully, um, this is the one to get over the line. Thanks for the reminder, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, perhaps on a happier note then, um, about 300 tickets sold in the Arsenal end for tomorrow. Uh, first of all, will the Williamson clan be there? Because we've become quite used to seeing them, I think. And also, um, just your thoughts on, I guess, increased away travel and particularly that game in Denmark in the group stage and what that means to you as the players and what that says about the progress of women's football and Arsenal women. Uh, yeah, the family are coming in there, their numbers tomorrow. I think they're making a little holiday out of it. Mum's working here, she works for Volkswagen, so she's actually in Braunschweig, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I think the Denmark game left like a, a big impression on me. That's the first time I've ever experienced that sort of away support um, in that those numbers and the, the crowd singing and stuff. So it'll be a fantastic atmosphere and we know that they have a, a great home following as well. So just adds to the, the spectacle of the game really. Um, so yeah, hopefully they'll be, they'll be loud for us tomorrow and we'll give them a performance that warrants it. I will speak to you after the game tomorrow night and come on Arsenal.